morning, everyone. Welcome to Mass this morning. Just a few announcements before we begin. As you know, the Diocesan Hope Appeal has been rescheduled for the weekend of October 4. Every registered family will receive a mailing from the bishop along with a pledge card. We ask you to please return it to the address that is listed, or you can directly uh, take it to the parish office. But again, thank you in advance for your kind generosity. I see as always very generous in the response to assist the many ministries of our diocese that directly affect and assist people. Grocery bags for the Cathedral Downtown Food Pantry are available at Mass, after Mass at the exits. As always, we hope you'll consider taking one, fill it with some of the items listed, and then return it to the Dwyer Hall Corridor next weekend. As I mentioned last week, today and next weekend, there will be free will offerings. Um, today, and as you know, since we cannot pass the basket, the special baskets are at the entrance. Today, we're pleased to have Sister Mary Donald Corcoran with us. Sister is from the Transfiguration Benedictine Monastery down in Windsor, New York, near Binghamton, and will be speaking to us on behalf of AIM, which is the Alliance for International Monasticism. So we're very pleased to have Sister with us. There is a special basket at each at the main entrance uh, for donations for that. If you're making out a check, it should be made out to Immaculate Conception. And in the memo, if you can put Mission Appeal, Mission Appeal. You also, if you're giving electronically, can go online and do that. There is a mission, uh, excuse me, not for this one, for the disaster relief there is, but for this one you can do it with a check. Next weekend is the national collection for disaster relief for those affected by the hurricanes and wildfires. Again, for that one, you make it out to IC with disaster relief. However, for that one, you can go on electronically and there's a tab for disaster relief on that. So. All that's in the book, and we hope you'll do that. Have a great day, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Immaculate Conception. As the waning days of summer turn to the season of harvest, let us embrace the plentiful bounty of God's love for each of us and understand that his spiritual nourishment sustains us always. Our celebrant is Monsignor Ron Bill, and giving our reflection today is Sister Donald, Mary Donald Corcoran from Transfiguration Monastery. I, Jan Vassar, am the proclaimer of the word. Donations for the mission appeal should be made out to Immaculate Conception with mission appeal written in the memo line. You may drop them in the basket, in the vestibule, or at the parish office through Thursday. A reminder to please silence your cell phones. I will now share with you the novena for the end to the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, full of grace, patroness of this nation and mother of the church, in this time of illness and worldwide need, we seek your intercession for the human family before your son's throne of grace and mercy. We ask for strength in adversity, health in weakness, and comfort in sorrow. Help us, O oh Blessed Mother, to be filled with confidence and trust in the tender compassion of our God. Let us not be afraid, like our own St. Mary Ann Cope, who entrusted her life and ministry among the outcasts of society into the care of our divine physician. Continue to watch over all who are sick, as well as those who care for them and give wisdom to all who are seeking a cure. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as we begin our celebration of the Eucharist.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Mass this morning on this 25th Sunday of the ordinary time of the year. A uh, little cool this morning, but we welcome you all and hope that uh, today will be a good day for you all. We ask God to bless us today as we begin in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we begin our liturgy this morning, let us pause, aware of God's goodness to us and the blessings that he gives to us every day of our lives. Lord, help us this day to do your will. Lord, have mercy. Fill us with your love for one another. Christ, have mercy. And forgive us for any of our faults and sins. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon the love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me and I do not know which I shall 
choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard, calling, going out about nine o'clock the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. He said to them, you two go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. He went out again around noon and around three o'clock again and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden in the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I'm not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give the last one the same as yours? Or am I not free to do so, as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. My friends, the Gospel of the Lord. This morning we have Sister Mary Donald Corcoran, a Benedictine sister from Transfiguration Monastery in Windsor, New York, down there by, by Binghamton. She will be speaking to us regarding the Alliance for International Monasticism. Just a thought, many years ago, <laughs> I think it was about 25 years ago, I took a class from sister. And uh, wow. It was great. And uh, again, sisters with us this morning. Welcome, sister. Well, thank you, Monsignor Bill, and thank you to Father Ryan and to your parish for allowing me to come to speak this morning about Benedictine missionaries. 
uh, you know that we are part of something called the Missionary Plan of Cooperation, which means that only once a year do you have a missionary group here to ask for your help for our missions. So next year you may have Franciscans or Dominicans and so on. And it's a very fair uh, arrangement because you are not asked for too much and every order that wants to be involved can be involved. So it's, it's a great system. The Alliance for International Monasticism is actually an effort on part of the Benedictines and Cistercians or Trappists to uh, cooperate together uh, to collect funds and then, for example, the funds collected here are sent to the diocese and then on to the American headquarters in Erie, Pennsylvania at that monastery and then from there to Paris and a committee of international abbots and abbesses uh, look at the proposals from all the monasteries around the world and divide the funds according to whatever the need is. And so uh, it's not just one mission that you are going to be helping, but actually 400 monasteries around the world. Uh, it's, it's an amazing system. I belong to a small group of Benedictines, uh, a, a congregation within the order called the Camaldolese Benedictines. And we have uh, two houses in the United States, actually three houses, uh, two on the West Coast that are men's houses. Ours is the only women's house in the United States. And then we have houses in Italy where we originated. Brazil, uh, two in Tanzania, two in India, and now one in Korea. So we're an international group. When we get together for chapter meetings, international meetings, uh, it's a sense of the global church. It's a wonderful sense of where the church is heading and uh, the expansion. One of the passages in scripture that means a great deal to me is when Jesus uh, in Luke 4 was invited to his own hometown synagogue to go and talk. And he opened the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, which read, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news to the poor, to liberate captives, and so forth. And I hope that today the Holy Spirit will rise in your hearts and be inspired to help us to preach to the poor, to take care of the poor, the sick, the homeless, and so forth. Uh, you have the wonderful example, which I think you all know about, of Mother Mary Ann Cope, selfless, uh, missionary to Hawaii, somebody who accomplished so much in this diocese and then moved on to Hawaii and is now canonized. It's just amazing. And I have to say that my own experience with missionaries, I've just been astounded with their faith, their dedication, their strong sense of call. I was given the opportunity to teach for three years at St. Louis University before coming to this diocese to help found a monastery. And uh, I probably taught more than 200 uh, novice masters and novice mistresses uh, from around the world in a program called the Institute of Religious Formation. Many of them were missionaries, not necessarily North Americans or Europeans going to the so-called third world, but missionaries from Brazil who were assigned to Africa, or Africans who were going to India. I mean, they, they, the mixture and the cross-cultural exchange was absolutely astounding. But what really, really influenced me was the depth of faith of these missionaries and their dedication. They have given up so much, you know, in giving up close contact with their families, their home cultures, their languages, and so forth. And then they take on kind of a new culture and a new home in their second homes, their, their new cultures. And their, their dedication is just something we need to help them. We need to help the missionaries. I think they're the future of the church. I had an opportunity to spend five weeks 
in Tanzania at one of our mission monasteries. And they took me to one of the outposts where two Italian sisters were taking care of probably 60 uh, very young children. They were not necessarily orphans, but they were children who were suffering severe uh, uh, malnutrition. And in, in Tanzania, there's not a sh so much a shortage of food as adequate nutrition. And here were two sisters uh, taking care of 60 children with the help of some of the local women and uh, pouring themselves out to take care of these 60 children, to make them healthy enough to be educated and so on. It was an amazing uh, example to me. So only once a year are you asked to help with missionary causes, and I hope you will be generous today. You know, we've all benefited from missionaries. Uh, America was a missionary country until about 1900, and so many of our parishes were founded by missionary priests and missionary sisters. And uh, my great-great-grandparents who came from Ireland settled around Corning, New York, and they were married in Corning uh, by a priest who was kind of a circuit rider at that time in northeast Pennsylvania, and he married them. They moved on to Minnesota and founded a town called Corcoran, Minnesota, which is my family name. But he went on to found a parish in Susquehanna, Pennsylvania, and that is only seven miles south of where I live now. So I kind of feel that I got called back to that area for, you know, for payback uh, to, to uh, use my gifts and my talents, my energy for the church in this area. So uh, if you can help today generously to give to uh, Benedictine and Cistercian uh, monastics, and especially the third world, uh, who are struggling in, in very difficult circumstances. Everything from big monasteries, like the Germans have founded a huge monastery in southern Tanzania, which has a hospital, a college, a prep school, a trade school, uh, and a, a pharmacy school. And uh, so it's a huge compound, you know, it's a huge place. And then that little missionary compound that I just told you about. So uh, thank you for this opportunity, and I promise the prayers of our sisters in uh, Windsor, New York, near Binghamton, for your intentions and that of your families and for your health and safety. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Donnell. And we will now continue uh, knowing that God is very much with us. Let us profess our faith together. For I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come, amen. And now, let us turn to God, who is generous in mercy and forgiveness, presenting the needs of the world before him. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the church that we may be a witness to Christ's love by practicing charity and promoting justice and peace throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this community, that we may find ways to help build a world of greater respect for human life and human dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the earth, that our nation's leaders will be inspired by God's spirit to protect all of his creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in harm's way of the wildfires and hurricanes, that in their heartbreak and despair, they experience God's comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering physically, emotionally, or spiritually, that the peace of the Lord will touch them and for all caregivers of the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists and researchers, that their expertise guide them to the discovery of new treatments and vaccines for the novel coronavirus, and that they are sustained by the prayers of the waiting world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all students and teachers, may the return to school be safe and inspiring for all learners and educators. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they feel God's embrace in heaven and the loving warm bond with their earthly family. And also, Michael Patterson, whom we remember at this liturgy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of abundance and generosity, we ask that you hear our prayers and grant them according to your holy will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We've heard God's words in the scriptures, and now we offer our gifts of bread and wine. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice that we are offering. Lord, wash me from my sins. Cleanse me from all my iniquity. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of our church. And let us pray. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, 
almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power, heaven and earth are full of your glories. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered into his passion, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, profess, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all of the faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters, our loved ones, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, especially St. Mary Ann Cope, who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command now, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace we grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer some sign to one another. Let us mingle in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bring us to life everlasting. Amen. My friends, this is the Lamb of God who takes away all of our sins. Happy those called to the banquet of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
you, everyone, for coming to Mass today. We ask God to bless you in a very special way today as we as we begin another week, another week of God's love for us. So let us pray together now. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with the sacrifice, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Have a good day, everyone, and hope to see you soon.